In this video, we're going to be discussing IVAs, VBAs, the systems that control them, and how to properly troubleshoot and diagnose them for what component is failing. In this video, we're going to be talking about IVAs, VVAs, what they do, how they work, and how to troubleshoot them. And then towards the end of the video, I have a small clip of an overhead that failed that had IVAs, and uh, what caused that and what causes overhead damage on these engines. Uh, before we get started on this video, I'd like to thank JSL Enterprises for a $50 donation on adeptape at yahoo.com on my PayPal account. Thank you very much, and on to the video. Okay, so before we get started as to why engines have IVAs and VVAs, we need to discuss why they have IVAs or VVAs. And the reason is there's only a couple sources of emissions from a diesel engine. There's soot and black smoke, which are basically the same thing, which are caused by unburned fuel. And then there's nitrous oxides, which are created from uh, nitrogen and oxygen being pressurized under real high pressure and under real high heat. And those create nitrous oxides, and those are ozone depleting. So they wanted to limit IV, or they wanted to limit nitrous oxide productions from mostly diesel engines, because in an automotive engine, you don't have lots of excess oxygen after the combustion after the combustion process. Unlike a diesel, where you're pretty much always running lean, and then you control the amount of fuel whereas a gas engine mixed the amount of fuel compared to the amount of incoming air. So what's a way to reduce nitrous oxides? Well, currently they're using the DEF setups, and that's supposed to reduce that. But before that, they had a way to reduce the amount of fresh air in the engine without adding EGR, without adding DEF to the after treatment. And what that was was to reduce the amount of pressure in the cylinders. And what they did with that was, we'll just say IVAs, because VVAs and IVAs are actually the same thing. For whatever reason, CAT has two terms for the same thing. So an IVA is an intake valve actuator, and a VVA is a variable valve actuator. But it's two terms for the same thing. And what they do is they open your intake valves longer than they normally would be open. So when your camshaft opens your intake valves, your cylinder is pulling down, sucking in fresh air. Well, what your IVAs do is they keep your valves open longer than the camshaft would. So the camshaft's normally closing as your cylinder or as your piston gets to bottom dead center, and then it comes out up for compression stroke. Well, the IVAs hold the intake valves open longer, so after it comes down, it's trying to build pressure so what it's doing is it's forcing some of the combustion air out of that cylinder before ignition happens so what's that what's that doing that's reducing the amount of oxygen pressure and nitrogen in your combustion process because remember air is mostly nitrogen with some oxygen so that's what they do now cat did not have a way of measuring the nitrous oxides in your exhaust until much later. The newer trucks, which can't doesn't make trucks anymore, but if you had a if you have a new truck with DEF, it's measuring your nitrous oxides. But on the older trucks they didn't do that. They basically said, okay, we have this IVA set up and we're suspecting that it's gonna work, and there are a few ways it can tell that it's working. But before we get into that, we need to explain how it works. Okay, so the first thing to understand is that the IVAs have a similar setup as the Jakes. They have an adjuster that sits over the intake valve, and it pushes down on the rocker arm. So you need to make sure that the setting is correct. And on most of the 
cat truck engines that are C15s, it's 20 thousandths. So what you'll do is you'll insert your 20 thousandths feeler gauge between the rocker arm and the adjuster for the IVA. And you do it the same way you do with Jake, so except you do it on the intake. So what you're going to do is if you're on rotation to adjust your intake valves, you also do your IVA settings. You then adjust your IVAs to 20 thousandths. And this is after you've adjusted your intake valve. You want to do your intake valve before you do your IVA adjuster, and then your IVAs are set correctly. Now we're going to be going over to a running engine, and we'll be talking about some of the different components. So first thing we need to know is that this is your intake valve actuation oil pressure sensor on a C15. On a C13 or C11, they're in under the valve cover, and they fail all the time. If you're getting an intake valve oil pressure sensor fault, it's probably that. Now, the stars here are, that's your purge valve for your intake oil pressure. Don't have too many problems with that, but there is a solenoid in there that can fail. So, moving on back to our running engine, we're going to be going to the rear of the engine. So, we're looking at three and four, five, and six cylinders. We're going to stop here. And you see where that arrows pointing so what we're looking at here is the IVA oil supply line which gets its oil supply from the engine block and then runs behind the back of the head and then feeds the oil rail on your valve cover base and there's also a check valve in there which prevents oil from back feeding into the engine and not much else to this it's just a line that runs from the engine supplying oil to your valve cover base now let's go back to our running engine here, and then we're going to be talking about the solenoids. So the IVAs have a solenoid for each individual cylinder, unlike the Jake, which has them for each bank of cylinders. And if you're suspecting that you have a weak or bad solenoid, you can ohm them out and compare them to the other solenoids. And there is a cat replacement for just the solenoids. They're sold in a kit of two. And the cat part number is 10R7302. And the part numbers are all the same from each individual engine. Now what we're looking at here is the oil crossover bridge. And what this is, is it bolts between your IVA slash Jake housing and the valve cover base. And it supplies oil from your valve cover base to your IVA housings. And these can crack, the O-rings can leak, the Jake house or the Jake or IVA housing can leak and cause problems. Now what we're looking at here is two bolts. The one on the left is an updated bolt, and the one on the right is the old style bolt. You want the left style updated bolts. And the reason is, do you see this broken rocker shaft and this broken IVA housing? Well, cats had some problems with their IVA engines in that the bolts will break and it can cause this amount of damage. And it can also wear into your head. So do you see the wear on the rocker shaft here? And these are the bolts that broke. Now these are obviously the updated bolts. If you do in your overhead, you might want to check and check the torque on these bolts and make sure that if you can update the bolts from the older style to the newer style because you don't want this to happen. And um, I don't really think it's the update on the bolts, but Cat recommends updating them. Now what we're looking at here is the wear from the rocker arm shafts bolting to the cylinder head. And over time they're going to wear into the cylinder head cradles. And it could get so bad you're going to have to change your cylinder head. Now I believe this wear is what causes the broken bolts, but Cat thinks that you need these updated bolts. And here's the part number for the updated bolts. but. They're fairly expensive, about $50 each, and you have nine of them, so you're talking quite a bit of money to update the bolts, and they seem to break just as much as the older bolts, um, but Cat does recommend updating them. If you're getting an engine rebuild done, you'll want to get the updated bolts, because if, if Cat sees a failure in the future and you don't have the updated bolts and you waived not replacing them, well, 
they could deny possibly a warranty claim if you have an extended warranty on that engine. So it's a good idea to get those updated bolts. Okay, so now you pretty much know all of the components for your IVA system and some of the failure points. So let's talk about, if you're getting codes, what you need to do. So there's only a few codes that are associated with this IVA setup. And as I showed earlier in the video, um, you know, all the twin turbo cats have these. So C11, C13, and the C15s with twin turbos. And they all pretty much look the same, except for the BXS engines. If you have a BXS, the intake valve actuators are a separate housing that is over the ends of the rocker arms, basically over the valves themselves, opposed to in the Jake housing itself. But all the other ones are pretty similar. So, since each individual cylinder has a solenoid, when the ECM gives you a code, let's say intake valve actuator number three, um, there's a couple codes it can give you. It can give you a current low, a current high, or not responding. So a current low or a current high is an electrical fault. Then you can ohm out the solenoid. You might have a problem with your wiring going to or from the solenoid. And remember, a current low is an open, and a current high is a short. Now, not responding is a little bit different. That means that when the ECM pops that solenoid, it should see a weaker cylinder, and it's not. So if you get one of those, those are harder to troubleshoot. It still could be your solenoid. It's just it wouldn't be the electrical portion. It would be the mechanical portion of the solenoid not working. Other things that can cause that code are leaks in that IVA bridge, leaks in the IVA housing itself. You could have low oil pressure getting to your IVAs, um, either through the rail, the check valve, the purge valve being open. Also, the number one sensor to fail on these IVA engines is your intake valve oil pressure sensor. That one I showed you that sits between the turbo and the Jake housings. Um, those fail all the time, and my theory is they sit next to the turbo. Well, that's not a theory. They do sit next to the turbo, but they fail a lot, and I believe it's because they sit next to the turbo all the time. And on C15, they're real easy to get to. Um, they just sit right there on the valve cover base. On a C11 or C13, they're under the valve cover, so you have to remove your valve cover, and then you'll see it bolted into or threaded into the intake um, or the valve cover base. So that's how to change those, and usually it's the sensor itself and not the wiring, although you want to do your proper wiring troubleshooting. So those are your IVAs, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Oh, I wanted to mention one other thing. Check your plugs when if you have a solenoid fault. Check your plug. Plug it in. Make sure the contacts are tight. If not, CAT has an update for the solenoid um, plug that you can just um, replace the plug itself. If you're going to do that, contact your local CAT dealer to get that. What it does is it, it crimps on to the uh, where the connector is, and then it, it uh, heat shrinks, and then you can put a new plug without changing the harness. I would say, though, if you're changing more than one plug, probably a good idea to just go ahead and change your, your uh, injector harness there that has the IVAs and the Jake. Um, plugs on the ends because if you're losing more than one um, chances are they're gonna the other ones are gonna start failing soon so go ahead and replace it all at once um, other than that I hope you guys learned a lot in this video uh, thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section thank you